All right, guys, what's up? Welcome back to another video. Welcome back to the channel. Question and answers video. So you guys sent in a bunch of questions and today I'm gonna to answer them. I'm gonna get right into this video. First question comes from Logan. How long have you been skating? That's hard to say because I've been skating on and off. I've probably been skating 15 plus years on and off. Next question is from Javier Sanchez and it says, when did you start tattooing and do you tattoo in CA? I probably started tattooing about eight, nine years ago now. And yes, I do tattoo out here. Um, I tattoo three days a week out here. It's 12 hour days. So that's like from noon until midnight, three days a week. Next question comes from Aiden Sluber. Probably butchered your last name, but he asks, how's Cali been? Cali's been great. It's awesome. I love it out here. So much freedom and opportunity in this country. And uh, it just seems like California is like this place you need to be if you're trying to do something. You know what I mean? Like I was trying to do stuff in Sydney, but I don't know, different vibes in Sydney. I feel like California is definitely the place that you want to be to uh, be an entrepreneur per se. Next question comes from the Jet Black Wings and they ask, will there ever be an Enoch school photo deck? That'd be cool, I think. I think it would be cool too, but then I would put myself right in front of all the criticism and all the haters that are gonna say, you copied FA, blah, 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 blah. So that would be a cool idea, but I'm not gonna do it because everyone's gonna think that I ripped FA and uh, haters love to hate. The next question comes from Rado Karani and he asks, favorite music? I can't really pinpoint my favorite music genre. I've listened to so many different genres over the years. It's hard to say, like some days in the morning I could be listening to Fleetwood Mac and then that same day in the afternoon be listening to like Chief Keef. So I don't really have a genre Apart from like, I don't really listen to like EDM. All right, next question here comes from, <laughs> I don't know if I can pronounce your name, Matthias Zumbi. And he asks, the main difference between Australia and California. Um, I'm not gonna go too into depth with this question because this is a topic I wanna do for like another video. I've got a really cool video in mind. But um, the main differences between Australia and California is Definitely being in Southern California, this is the epicenter of skateboarding in the world. So I'm privileged to be around the scene here and to be able to connect with different like-minded YouTube skateboarders and skateboarders and just people of that same scene. Whereas in Australia, the population of Australia is much smaller. So there's gonna be less people that are involved in the skateboard scene, meaning that there's gonna be less people to kind of bounce off and collaborate with and work with so that's probably one of the main differences the other main difference is the weather it had it's rained probably three times since i've been here it never rains here um the money lasts longer here like a 20 dollar us note would probably last you the same as like i don't know 30 40 dollars in australia so the money lasts longer here but then there's the tipping you have to tip at most like city and restaurants. I'm not talking about like when you go to Macca's and you buy something, you don't have to tip. Like when you go to a restaurant and you sit down and there's a waiter and they serve you, then you have to tip. That's probably an another main difference. All right, next question comes from First Rate Skate. And they ask, what's the biggest culture shock you had moving to the USA? So not long ago, I had my first experience at the urgent care. I went in to see a doctor, needed an X-ray and there's actually a sign. So it's just like a doctor's office. You go in, there's a waiting area, there's a reception, there's some TVs on the wall. And there was a sign at the desk that said, check out. Legit, it said, check out like you were at Woolworths or Coles or at the grocery store. And you have to pay to see the doctor. <laughs> so I ended up paying 95 bucks just to talk to the doctor. And then I paid another 130 to get an x-ray. And then I'm up for another $420 to get an MRI on my ankle. So yeah, that's a, the number one biggest culture shock for me was experience how the kind of healthcare system here works. Next question is from Kevin Ramirez and he asks, do you like Xavier Wolf? Yes, I like Xavier Wolf. Shouts out Sash Hello Water Boys. Next question comes from Danny Cabanas. He asks, do you FW the baggy pants trend in skating? I think, yeah, it looks cool. I've tried to wear baggy pants, but for some reason when I wear baggy pants, it kind of makes me look really short, makes my legs look short and I don't like it. 
So I'll kind of stick to like the normal straight leg. I don't wear skinny jeans anymore though. I used to wear skinny jeans and skate, but I think it's dope. A few people have asked me if I was going to get the Polar Big Boys. And uh, I said like, no, nah, it's like, I don't want to spend that much money on some pants like that. I'm sure they're dope, but I'm just, I don't know. Haven't really hit that that time in my life where I want to put on baggy pants again. I mean, I used to wear baggy pants like that when I was in like grade four and listen to like Limp Biscuit and Eminem, you know? Next question comes from skateboard underscore swiper 941. He asks, Ricky from Braille went to Outback Steakhouse. Have you been? If you so, if so, did you like it? Well, funny story about Outback Steakhouse. Outback Steakhouse is actually owned by two dudes from Florida. It's not owned by an Australian. So that was, a, that was a really funny thing that I found out. But yeah, before I was a vegan, I used to be at Outback Steakhouse weekly. I used to go in and get like dinner there like at least once a week back before I was a vegan. Next question comes from Jeremy Hampton. Sorry if I'm pronouncing your name wrong. Are you coming out to NYC? I do want to come out to the East Coast. I really want to check out New York, but I can't catch a plane right now in the country for reasons. Um, so yeah, I, I love to get out there and skate, but I'm not going to drive out there because driving up to Washington and back was a big trip. So I feel like driving out to the East Coast would be like three times that. So one day I'll be able to fly out there and it'll be dope. So yeah. Next question comes from Peter Chavez. He asks, why do you like hockey boards? I like hockey boards, NFA boards because of the shape. They have that really cool shovel nose. Concave is really steep. Before I skated hockey, I skated Baker and Deathwish. And honestly, Baker and Deathwish, the concave is quite mellow and flat. So jumping onto like a hockey slash FA, it's been rad because I just feel like there's more kind of pop in the board, at least for me anyway. Next question comes from Slimeball and they ask, have you ever quit skating for like a year or more? So the longest I've been off the board, one time was about nine months and the other time would probably would have been about six months. So... I feel like that's probably nine plus six. That's more than a year. <laughs> so yeah, I have been off the board for that long. It wasn't all at one time though. It was like the nine months I skated for a bit again. Then it was like the six months and then I've been skating from then until now. Next question comes from Dylan Green. Do you plan on staying in the USA long term? Yes, I do. I love it out here. As an Australian, being born and raised in Australia, you don't understand the amount of opportunity and freedom you have in the USA. Like being in Australia, it's kind of like a police state. The government wanna kind of control you. I feel like I sound like a conspiracy theorist, but I'm just telling you, living in Australia, it's like super strict compared to out here. There's so much more freedom out here. You're not getting hassled so much for things from like the government or the police and whatnot, or at least I have it anyway. But yeah, I do wanna stay in the USA long term. Next question comes from David Hart and he asks, what's one thing you miss most about your hometown or maybe something you took for granted back home not realizing until you came to the USA? Definitely the biggest thing that has hit, that has hit me and made me feel homesick about my hometown is like waking up in the morning. In Australia anyway, you'd wake up in the morning, you can hear like the cockatoos squawking and there's like cicadas outside and stuff. You can just hear nature I guess. Whereas here you wake up and you don't really hear that. I mean, you'll hear the occasional crow every now and then, but you won't hear kookaburras, you won't hear cockatoos, um, you won't hear magpies, that kind of stuff. So like the wildlife really hits me about my hometown. And just because living in Southern California, doing this kind of stuff, it's very fast paced. You've got to be like ready to go out and get it like every day. Whereas living back home in Australia, I was like a sleepy little town and I could kind of procrastinate more, I guess. And I wouldn't have to worry about having to like be on the ball every day. Whereas here I'm like pushing and pushing and pushing. So yeah, that's like the main thing. Team Tom Jump and they ask, what's your setup? Basically I ride anything between 838 to 85, hockey slash FA. I ride independent 149s. I believe that the standards are not the hollows. I have Bronson Roars and Bronson G3s. I have two setups. They're roughly the same. And the wheels are between a 52 to 53 millimeter 101 conical, full conical shape. That's about it. And I think I have bronze hardware. Next question comes from Emotive Visuals. I can't talk. 
And they asked, the tattoos you did on your homie were super professional. Any aspirations towards working out at or owning your own tattoo shop someday? Thanks, man. To begin with, thank you. Um, I used to want to own my own shop in my hometown where I used to live and like just go to work and like tattoo every day and live that tattoo lifestyle. But I kind of got over it. No offense to the tattoo industry. I just got over it because I feel like I had kind of exhausted myself with the amount of energy and effort I'd put into pursuing tattooing, which is fine. But I, I started pursuing tattooing at a very young age. I was like 17, 18 years old. Um, I got my first apprenticeship in a shop when I was 18. And my experience with the industry wasn't the most positive. So now I'm trying to like slow down a bit. Like I still can do a really nice tattoo and like draw and whatever, but I'm not so like, yeah, man, like ink masters. Woo, like, yeah, dude, traditional, woo. Like I can do a nice tattoo, I can draw. I can put a nice tattoo on someone that wants to get a nice tattoo, but I'm not like, yeah, dude, like I'm gonna be in this industry until I'm like 80, I'm gonna own my own shop. I'm just kind of like, oh, cool, like whatever. But um, yeah, I used to want to own my own shop, but I don't anymore. That's the long winded answer to your question. Next question comes from Trey Gabriel and they ask, do you miss your homies back in Australia? Yes, I miss my homies back in Australia. Um, it seems like the momentum that I had tried to build with my local skate scene and with my friends back then has kept building since I've left. Shouts out to Leon. Really, really proud of him because um, he jumped on the YouTube thing. He uh, hustled it out, got videos done. He just hit a thousand subscribers. So yeah, super proud of you, Leon. It's really awesome to see you do this because I felt like such a black sheep doing YouTube back in Sydney, like especially YouTube skateboarding. Um, yeah, people just weren't about it back then, but now more people are kind of coming around to the idea and it's just opening other avenues to everybody. So yeah, it's awesome. And I miss my homies back in Australia. All right, next question comes from Daniel Green. What's up, bro? Can you come back up to Washington and finish my arm? Dude, come down come down to Southern California. I mean, once you get back from your um, training and stuff, come down, we'll finish your arm for sure. Next question comes from Nobody86 and they ask, how do you deal with homesickness? Usually, if I'm homesick, it usually happens like once a week, I'll feel homesick. I'll chuck on some like Australian content. I'll listen to like a, some Australian music, like Australian crawl, cold chisel. And then, um, yeah, usually if I'm listening to that stuff, watching that stuff, sometimes I'll ring, I'll ring my mom, talk to my mom, or like I'll just message some of my friends back in Australia. That's how I kind of deal with homesickness. But yeah, dude, the homesickness out here is real. It hits super hard. Um, yeah, I don't know if you've ever listened to Sticky Fingers, but that song Australia Street, like when I hear it, it like, it just hits, you know. Next question comes from Stephen Welsh and they ask, what is a good passing time you do other than skating? I've been messing around with graffiti again because my ankles, I can't skate to my normal ability. So I've been messing around with graffiti again. I've been riding my fixed gear bike a lot more. Um, that's about it. Riding graffiti and then riding my fixie. So yeah. Next question comes from underscore dot Tom page dot underscore. They ask favorite skate video. My favorite skate video, mind you, I didn't really grow up watching skate videos. Like I wasn't, I grew up not poor, but not rich and not in the middle. So I don't know where that would, that would land me, but I kind of only the first ever skate video I watched was, um, bacon destroy. And it was because I bought it through like iTunes or something. And um, that was the first ever skate video I watched. I'd seen snippets of other videos, like, um, what's that girl one? And it was super crazy. Yeah, right. I'd seen snippets of stuff online back in the early days of the internet, but I never watched from end to end a proper skate video. But my all time favorite skate video, it sounds a bit biased because it's from Australia, but Passport Kitsch. That's like sick. Just the skating, just the music, cutscenes, editing, it just flows so together. It flows so together. It flows together so well in a way that's like very authentic and Australiana. Like you can watch skate videos. The majority of skate videos are from the USA 
and I'm um, just watching kitsch it's like I can relate more because I can I know those spots in real life and it's sick to see people skating those spots but yeah favorite skate video is kitsch passport if you haven't watched it go and check it out right now not right now but after you watch this video next question comes from still lost and they ask I know you're a vegan and I think I've seen you say no to drinking as well are you straight edge and what's your top three hardcore bands I stopped drinking when I was 17 I can't really say how long I've been completely sober for because it'd give away my age but I stopped drinking when I was 17 living in Australia the drinking age is 18 so you naturally start to drink when you're like well I, had, I first got drunk when I was 13 so you're usually drinking from like 13 14 15 16 17 and um, by, by the time I was 17, I was like over it. I couldn't skate the next day, I was so hungover. Had a bunch of pimples, and uh, it was just a gross feeling being hungover and throwing up and stuff, so yeah. Uh, what's your favorite, what's your top three hardcore bands? If we're talking like hardcore, hardcore, probably Hoods. It's a hardcore, they're a hardcore band from Sacramento. Death Before Dishonor, hardcore band from Boston. And then probably, I'd have to say Madball. Or, no, no, sorry. Chromags and Madball. Top three. Next question comes from Sudayashi, and they ask, when you get thrown off your skate game for a day or so, what do you do to overcome it? So basically, the more you skate, the more consistent you're gonna be, the more natural you're gonna feel on your board. I used to skate about three times a week. Now I've been skating once a week because of my ankle. I shouldn't be skating at all, but I can't help myself. Anyway, usually, if you're, if you're not feeling as your normal self on your board, I'll just try to take it slow. Go back to your basics. Hit your ollies, hit your 180s, hit your nollies, hit your 50-50s, hit your board slides. Just take it slow. Don't try to force yourself into like getting right back into your old kind of skate ability. Enjoy being out skating because honestly, a lot of people don't get the opportunity to go out and skate. It's either they don't skate, they're injured, or they have to go to work or they're stuck at home with like um, their girlfriends or partners and they can't get out and skate. So if you're, if you're able to like leave the house and go and skate, that's awesome. Like you should really appreciate being well and being able to skate. I'm trying to punch through as many questions as I can. I don't want it to be a super long video. Next question comes from Arjun Storm. They ask, what does skating mean to you? Skating means a lot to me because I feel like if I didn't skate and if I hadn't skated at such a young age, I wouldn't know who I'd become. And just as who I am as a human, I feel like skateboarding has taught me a lot of things that are good things, you know? So yeah, that's what skating means to me, kind of. It's a guide. I feel like it's like a guide for my life in a way. Next question. This is a good one. Comes from Noah Suvenka. Advice for a skater living in quiet Australia. All right, now this is a tricky one because I don't not too sure whereabouts in Australia you are from, but if you're skating in quiet Australia, I'm going to hope you have a local park and I'm going to hope that it's a decent local park. When I say decent, at least it has a flat ledge, a flat bar and a quarter pipe because that's kind of the basis of what you need. My advice would be to, you kind of have to push yourself yourself in that way i mean i don't know if you have friends to skate with out there but if you're skating majority majority by yourself it's going to be tough so the more stuff that you look at online that's going to be the scene for you is to be able to look at instagram youtube watch people skating there and then you're going to have to apply that energy to your skate sessions and it's not all bad though i mean i used to skate a lot quite a bit so I would write in my phone tricks that I wanted to learn and tricks that I wanted to progress on and I would just tick them off the list. So that's some advice. You could um, make a hit list of what you want to try to learn or what you want to film, kind of that thing. But um, yeah, it is tough, dude. Next question comes from Sarah and they ask, what got you into skateboarding? So when I was a small little boy, my dad had VHS recorded a snippet of the news. I think it was like Channel 9 News and it was like the last section before the end of the news program and it was about skateboarders in New York and I feel like it was Brooklyn Banks I was skating at and these dudes were just ripping and I was like mind blown because before that point I had a skateboard but before that point I didn't know that's what it was for I just thought you rode the skateboard like you just ride your bike up and down the driveway when you're a kid so I seen that video and then um the coolest thing from that video I seen was the guy was talking to the news anchor and he's like, yo, I gotta go, I gotta catch my bus. And then this bus like pulled out of the street. He threw down his board 
acid dropped off the gutter and grabbed the back of the bus and like skitched the bus out of the frame and I thought it was the coolest thing ever. So that's what got me into skateboarding, something from the news. Next question comes from Tyler Pulse and they ask, what is the idea or meaning behind your brand evening? What made you want to go with that? So basically I chose the word evening to run with because I like the evening time, like when the sun's starting to go down, you get all those cool colors in the sky. And usually if you've been out skating all day with your friends, your body's tired, your body's releasing the dopamine and you feel kind of, you feel really nice. You feel really relaxed and you feel kind of, I don't know, it's hard to put it, unless that's happened to you out skating, you've been skating all day with your friends, you see the sun going down, you get those endorphins, it's hard to explain, but that's basically why, because I like evening time and it's an easy word to remember, evening. And it's simple. So people aren't going to forget what it is instead of having some crazy brand name like or something like that. It's just like evening. It's simple, it's effective, and everybody knows what evening is. Next question comes from the homie Janik over in Germany. He asks, what's your way to overcome hesitation? You have to break through that wall. Like you throw down your board and then just about when you're about to get to that point where you need to start thinking about popping onto a rail, ledge, popping out of a quarter pipe, anything, there's a wall and you kind of have to push through it. It's kind of a, as stupid as it sounds, it's kind of a blind faith thing. Like, you know your own body, you know physically what you can do skateboarding. Um, you just have to kind of push through it and then hope for the best. Nine times out of 10, you'll push through it, get on, and the outcome won't be as bad. Even if you bail, the outcome isn't as bad as what you think in, the, in your head is going to be. So you've kind of just got to force yourself per se through it i don't really have I, that's how i do it anyway um next question comes from marco chacon they ask what inspired you to make videos basically i had a lot of time on my hands in between jobs i'd been watching a lot of youtube i'd fell down the skate youtube rabbit hole and then i tried to look for australian skate youtubers and back then there was none and i was like ding why is anyone else doing this i should do this so that's what got me into making videos next question comes from jude shouts out jude jude from texas and he asks what are some things you recommend doing slash trying when you feel stagnant in your progression of skating if you feel stagnant in the progression of your skating that means that you're not looking at skating enough you're not watching enough skate videos you're not watching enough skate content um you need to pick tricks you want to learn dude like i prior to before dan taught me how to blunt i was scared of doing blunts and i wanted to learn them because they look cool and i was like you know what i'm just going to spend my time and i'm going to learn how to do the trick so definitely progressing it's kind of a double-edged sword because it's like you feel stagnant because you're not progressing but the only way to feel better about skating is progressing so you need to push yourself to progress in a way so all the scary tricks you don't want to do they're the ones you got to work on next question dude i think i've smashed like most of these questions out next question comes from Vinny kellerman and they ask face tattoos yes or no i mean i've tattooed a bunch of faces it's nothing new to me personally i probably wouldn't get my face tattooed because i just don't think it'd suit me I have too much of a baby face to get my face tattooed. I look kind of, I don't know, look kind of strange. Leave the face tattoos to the people that like, look like gnarly. They look like they can rock them. I'm, I'm too baby faced to have a face tattoo. If you guys want to ask more questions, I could probably do another one of these down the track. So yeah, shouts out for hanging out all the way to the end of this video, hearing me answer all these questions and listening to my terrible delivery, delivery of speech. Yeah, follow me on Instagram, at Enochism. Follow Evening Mob, join the mob today eveningmob.com go grab one of these sick t-shirts it's about it guys cheers for sending me in so many questions to answer that was fun had a lot of fun i need a drink now because my voice is dry but yeah hopefully i'll catch you guys in the next video cheers for watching like you, like you.